Hey Kipsters, we're back at it again. Yes, these rules are constantly going to be in your life and once you can master them, you will be forever on the road to success with fractions. All right, so we are dividing fractions. We have A over B divided by C over D equals A times D over B times C. Now literally, this is what it means. When you divide by a number, you're really taking When you divide by a number, you're really multiplying by its reciprocal. And if I do that, then it looks like A over D over B times C. So that's why A over B divided by C over D equals A times D all over B times C. Okay? Let's apply that rule to this special case, 2 thirds divided by 10 twelfths. It may be tempting to cross cancel here, but I can only cross cancel when I am multiplying in. Right here, I am dividing. So I need to first change this so it looks like multiplication. So I have two thirds multiplied by the reciprocal. Because when you divide, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's 12 over 10. And you find the reciprocal by inverting the numerator and denominator. I would look to see if I can cross cancel. I can do that because I'm multiplying fractions. And 2 and 10, they have a common factor of 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. The only common factor that 1 and 5 have is 1. So I'll move on to the next part that I can see if I can cross cancel. 3 and 12. Hmm. They have a common factor of 3. So I will do 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay. I check to see, can I cross cancel any more other than pulling out a factor of 1? And the answer is no. Now I'm checking to see if I can simplify any more with 4 fifths. Can't do that. And with 1 over 1, I can't do that either. So I really have 1 over 1 times 4 over 5. And when I multiply fractions, I know that I just go across. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 5 is 5. I check to see if I can pull out a common factor other than 1 out of 4 and 5, and I can't. Now let me see, how many pieces does it take to make a whole? 5. I don't even have 5, so I know that this cannot be changed to a mixed number. Alright, next example. We have a mixed number here. First step is to change these into fractions. 2 times 2 will give me 4, plus 1 will give me 5, all over 2, divided by... 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 3, which is 8, all over 5. My first step is to rewrite this so that I am multiplying by the reciprocal, because that's what division is. So 5 halves multiplied by the reciprocal of 8 fifths, which is 5 eighths. Now I check to see if I can cross cancel with 5 and 8. The only common factor they have is 1, so I'm going to move on to 2 and 5. Only common factor they have is 1. So I'm going to move over here and just start to multiply across. 5 times 5 is 25. And 8 times 2, or 2 times 8, is 16. I look here to see if I can pull out a common factor. And I cannot currently. But I can notice that it takes 16 pieces to make a whole. I have at least 16 pieces. I have 25. So I'm going to put this into division and use my algorithm to change an improper fraction into a mixed number. 16, it, we have to figure out how many times 16 can go into 25 without going over. 2 is not greater than 16, but 25 is. So 16 can go into 25 one time. 1 times 16 is 16. 25 subtract 16 is 9. Uh, no more numbers to pull down. My whole number is 1. My denominator is 16, and my numerator is 9. And that is the final answer. So 2 and a half divided by 1 and 3 fifths equals 1 and 9 sixteenths. If ever you have a question about this, you can just rewind the video and go back and watch the tape at your own speed. Thank you, everybody.